We're going to see a short video first. Uh, Come on. And, and, uh, uh, from the video, then we're going to get into, of course, the more serious uh, part of this uh, class, which is the tasting. Uh, Pete is, uh, actually has a little certificate here that I wanted to read for you, which I think is uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, for those of you who have Come on in, ladies. Come on in. Uh, he's from, this is a, a, actually a, uh, this is an online. The, the first part is online, yes. Online. Anybody can do that online, by the way. Successfully completing the certified beer server exam. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Congratulations. That, was the, that was the easy part, let me tell you. <laughs> it's the next step, though. It's a, that's a bit. That's a pain. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to go over today what, the, what, it's, what it's like to be, uh, uh, to be in this business. And I'm sure most of you are well aware of the fact that uh, you know, beer is the most popular alcoholic beverage in not only the United States. It's the world, yeah. Worldwide. So uh, I think it's interesting, and I think from the culinary and the hospitality aspect, uh, I'm sure you've been to, you may have been to wine and uh, food pairings, but you know, as we were speaking earlier, uh, now it's becoming just as popular, our beer and food pairings. I know they might sound a little odd to you, but uh, from a hospitality standpoint, that's a great way to market your product. So without any further delay, please let me introduce Pete Holloway. Hello. How many people can tell me, well, what are the four main ingredients in beer? Water, yeast, hops, rice. Some kind, of, some kind of grain, that's right. That's how it's been brewed forever, for a very, very, very long time. Beer has been around, it basically started out because it was a lot healthier for you to drink beer than it was for you to drink the water in the Middle Ages and times before that. So people would get pretty sick if they were sitting around drinking the water, so they drank the beer. Some people drank too much of it, but that's okay. Um, those four ingredients were actually established in the Reinheitsgebot. I probably mispronounced it, and someone who's a German major can correct me on that later, but that was a German purity law enacted in the 1500s, and the Germans did it for what other reason? Why else would a government put a law in the books but to collect taxes on beer? So that was actually why they did it. There's a lot of things I was going to cover, and then Don gave me a couple of videos, and this guy, you think my job would be nice? I want this guy's job. He went around all these different breweries, and he goes over a lot of things that I was going to go over it, and he's a little more succinct than I will be because I tend to ramble sometimes. Um, so I'm going to stop it in a couple of, a couple of places, but we're going to watch this. We've got, a, we've got a few different beers here that we're going to taste later on. There's two beers that aren't even on the market yet. This one from Ithaca is called Groundbreak, and this Harpoon Belgian, Belgian Pale. I've never, nobody's ever had these because these were just delivered to the salesman yesterday as samples. So they're not even in the stores yet. Everything else you can get in the stores. So, so these, these are kind of a nice little treat for you too. Uh, we're gonna start out with something that most of you guys have probably had, because it's silly to watch a, a video on beer and not have a beer. I'm gonna call this our toothpaste beer, because hopefully, you guys are pretty good with your hygiene, and hopefully you brushed your teeth this morning. So why don't you uh, get rid of the toothpaste with a mass-produced Labatt product. There's uh, glasses that Don's got. Just pour a little, just pour a little in there. Most of you probably had this. This is what this is what we call a mass-produced beer. Some people claim that these these small these small breweries, you know, like the the, the mass the mass beers spill more beer than these little breweries produce. It's not really true, because if you've ever visited one of these mass breweries like Anheuser-Busch, Little Bats, they don't spill a drop. They're pretty amazing breweries there. So this is something you guys have all probably had, and like I said, we'll call it toothpaste beer. So I'm gonna get in with the, uh, with the video. The basic ingredients couldn't be simpler. Water, drink, I'm sorry. <laughs> pot, and yeast. Yet somehow, we combine to build empires through revolution and bring out the individualist with a vengeance. It's the American dream brought to a head. I'm starting my frothy quest in Boston, just a few miles from Plymouth Rock. The truth is, the Mayflower cut its voyage short and made an emergency landing in Massachusetts Bay. You want to know why? Can anybody guess? 
Yeah, they actually did run out of beer. And another thing that <laughs> the reason why I stopped it here, if you ever go to if you ever go to Boston, it's a it is a great beer town. Don't bother going to the Sam Adams Brewery. They really don't brew anything there. It's, it's kind of a it's kind of a waste. What you want to do, and what he did, he never says it in the movie in the video though. You go to the Harpoon Brewery. It's on the waterfront. There's a bunch of restaurants around there. That's a really cool brewery. They actually do brew there, and and we've actually been there. I've been there a couple of times. We're actually going to taste a beer from Harpoon, but the uh, the Sam Adams tour that everybody wants to go to, they don't brew there, and it's it's not that great. To be honest with you, so I'll save yourself a little time. <laughs> because they ran out of beer, it's true. Today the tradition continues. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Free Beer Festival here one more time. I'm at the sold-out Extreme Beer Fest, where the crown heads of beer are showing their newest concoctions to thousands of their loyal subjects. Festivals like this happen every year all around the world, and it's for one reason, the love of beer. I've actually gone to this beer festival. I go to beer festivals all the time. I highly recommend getting out and going to them. The Buffalo Beer Festival is fine. If you can go to one of these major festivals, it, they're incredible. I was, I was uh, not this year, but the, the year before I was there, and by extreme beers, they're talking usually higher alcohol content, and just the brewers kind of get bored making the same beers, so they do experimental batches. The year I was there, they were experimenting with something called, um, it's a Flanders style. It's a, it's a Flemish, it's a, a Flemish beer, also called Flanders style. It uses wild yeast instead of cultured yeast it's an acquired taste to say the least <laughs> they kind of taste like like a spoiled beer they almost taste like a, like a vinegar so a lot of them weren't weren't exactly my cup of tea but it's it's a style of beer so if you ever see something like oh if you're ever at a bar and like oh you got to try this brand new beer it's a flemish style you should be prepared because if you're not used to it it's going to taste like it's a spoiled beer and most of you in here aren't going to like it but this is a fun festival to go to too <laughs> That guy started a, a, a magazine called Beer Advocate. If you ever see it around, you see it in bars. It's, it's, a, it's a really good magazine to read. Tequila goggle effect. 